Welcome back to HANA Basics for Developers. So in our previous exercise and video, we had a, a look at utilizing pure Node.js development. <clears throat> really, we spent a lot of time just structuring our, our service module uh, for, for future development. All we really added was route handlers and uh, security wiring in. And we did wire in the HANA database connectivity, but we didn't actually utilize it yet. We only had our one uh, RESTful service handler that uh, returned hello world. Now we want to uh, return to our service module and continue to build on what we've already set up, but more event handlers, more uh, RESTful handlers, and in particular begin to utilize connectivity to the HANA database. So we'll see how we can send queries into the HANA database and return the results in, in this pure Node.js environment. We'll do a particular focus here as well on, um, on the fact that Node.js programmatically executes very differently than just regular JavaScript or if you're used to XSJS. Um, part of the power of Node.js is the fact that it uses a highly evented model. <coughs> This is because most computer programs spend a lot of time waiting on something else. They wait on input-output, they wait on disk, they wait on database, they wait on memory, they wait on a network uh, response. And what Node.js tries to do is take all that wait time and instead do something else. Instead of just sitting there doing nothing, it moves on to do something else. But this means that the execution flow is not sequential, like we would expect it to be in other programming environments. Now, over the next couple of videos, we'll look at how that impacts the programming model, but we'll look in, in this video in particular how it impacts how we interact with the database. Because unlike XSJS, we're not going to be able to just say, connect to database, send this query in, prepare it, execute it, and get the results back, because each of those things is going to happen asynchronously, and uh, we're going to need event handlers uh, to process when that event is done. So in other words, we connect to the database. We can't move on to the next line of code to prepare the database statement until the connection is done. But Node.js wants to naturally move on to the next command, even if the database connection isn't established yet. And we'll see how we balance the... Um, the power of this programming model, particularly for doing lots of parallel requests with the little bit more complexity that it adds to the uh, design time environment. When we're coding, we, we, simply, we certainly have to think a little bit differently than we would in other sequential programming languages. So let's uh, go back over to the Web IDE and we'll pick up where we left off with this uh, SRV module. That's our Node.js module that has, uh, we're already started to put some structure in here with, uh, with routes. And what we want to do is we want to go to the, uh, the index.js and we want to add another route handler here. So we're just going to come and say um, that I want, uh, we're going to do the same app use, but now we're going to look for node ex2 so the second exercise in our node.js section uh, pure node.js section and then we're going to send that to a file also in the routes folder named ex2 keep that pretty simple there we are now one thing before we start uh, doing our coding here of this ex2 file I know that we want to take advantage of some JavaScript features that um, that are very new, that uh, maybe are in the latest version of ECMA, and our checks that are taking place, the, the lint checks, the client-side checking, um, although it's set up to support ES6 and Node.js, it, um, uh, it needs some additional settings here to... Um, uh, 
to take advantage of all the things that we're going to want to use in this project. So I know, let's just go ahead and extend the rules. So all the rules for the client side checking are here in this ESLINTRC file. It allows you to customize the, the client side checker. You can turn on and off certain checks, just like we've been doing here in the header. You can also per file, turn on and off certain checks. What we want to do is we want to make a global change here. And I've actually prepared a little uh, code snippet so that uh, I'm sure that I get this right. So let me just come out here to my GitHub repository. And we'll get the code snippets. And um, oh, actually, I did not prepare a code snippet for this one. So let's type it in. I'm sorry. Uh, so what we want to do is before the rules, we want to add a new section here called parser options and let's see what options we're adding we want to add a source type of module let it know we're using uh, node.js modules and uh, ECMA version we're going to use the 2017 version. Okay. So that's going to update our client side syntax checks so we don't see any erroneous errors for the uh, functionality that we're going to use because we're going to use some um, very new functionality here. Next, we can go ahead and create the file for this route that we just referenced here, this ex2. So we'll come here to our routes and we'll create a new file, ex2.js. And um, let's go ahead. I do have a code snippet for this. That's where I was, I was looking ahead there. Um, so let's go ahead and grab this code snippet that will bring in the basic structure. And then we'll talk about it. All right. So similar to the exercise that we did yesterday, remember our MyNodeJS, we set up a module that initialized uh, its connection to Express and then had handlers for specific subparts of the URL. For instance, if we see forward slash high, then we'll respond. Uh, we have the request and response object here. We can write back out in the response object a text string, and then you have to return your instance of express uh, to the calling, uh, 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 the calling route handler here. We want to set up the same basic structure here. We're going to have our... Uh, uh, instance of express and we're going to return that at the end of our processing but of course we have a little bit more uh, going on here than just returning hello world uh, what we're going to do is if we get a get request to the base url of this route then we are going to uh, create an instance of the um, of the hana client module now this is the low layer hana client um, this is like, if you were in Java, this would be like getting access to the JDBC driver. Um, so we have direct access uh, to, uh, to the HANA database client. Um, this is just another Node.js module that uh, we at SAP publish. Um, and we're able to then look up the HANA connectivity settings. So this is where we're uh, using this XS environment to get the connection settings from the bound container. And the one thing that we have to do here with this low level HANA client is we have to build our connection parameters, basically our connection string. So all of those are in the HANA options here from the uh, container, uh, but we need to you know, build the host and port, the username, the password, the schema. Um, you probably also wanna load like the client certificate settings and things like that. Um, in my, my system, I don't require secure connection to the database. It's just a local development system. So I'll just go, uh, with the basic settings here. Uh, but then we're able to connect to the database, but notice what happens here. Uh, I don't have a connect and then put a semicolon, you know, end the command and then move on to the next command. Actually, I have an embedded callback. So still within the connect command. I've got these curly brackets here, and I'm actually creating a function inside this command. And I could go over and put it in its own separate function and, and call it in line here, but 
for the most part, when you do the event, the embedded events in Node.js, most people will just put them in line like this. So what ends up happening is we connect, and only once the connection is established do we start processing the logic that falls inside here. And actually, after the connection, after we make the request to make the connection, Node.js is going to move on to the next command. Uh, there, there is no next command here. We just move to the return app, uh, but it doesn't stop and wait for the connection to be established. That's why we need to embed the next set of logic inside here. So, of course, we want to check for an error, and if there was an error, we'll return that uh, to the uh, uh, we return that response object. So, come back to the web browser. We're setting the status 500, and we're, you know we set the error message back. But then, if it, we got a good connection, we'll we'll get access to the connection object. And we can go ahead and um, execute a SQL statement. And this works the same way. Uh, I don't immediately get the results back. I don't have results equal execute. The results will be passed into the event handler. Uh, because, once again, this is all going to happen asynchronous, asynchronously as well. Node.js isn't going to wait on HANA to finish executing the, the application. It's going to move on to the next command. And you can see where this would be very efficient if you have multiple queries you want to run. It isn't going to wait for the first one to finish before it moves on to the next query. But we have to have some way to respond to, to get the results when they are finished. And that's the embedded event handler here. Uh, so uh, what we have is inside this uh, execute, we've got another event taking place here, another event handler. Uh, so that when it's done, we'll check for the error again. If, uh, if it was successful, then we'll go ahead and disconnect from the database and we'll, we'll take the data that was returned, this results, and um, it's JSON. So we'll just put it back in the response object and tell the client side that it's JSON so that it appears all nice on the client side. All right. Um, now, this is the low-level driver, the HANA client. And I show this to you so you're aware that it's out there. But in fact, most developers usually don't code directly against this low-level client. Um, what we have is we have a, a, a kind of an abstracted HANA client, the HDB EXT module. If you remember yesterday, uh, in uh, the previous video, we added uh, the... Um, the HANA client to our package JSON, but we also added uh, uh, HDB EXT right here. This HDB EXT is a wrapper around the HANA client that does a lot of work for us, and it simplifies the process of using the HANA client. For instance, with HDB EXT, you don't have to build this connection string yourself. It'd be built automatically inside the processing of this uh, wrapper module. And if you remember also to the previous video, in our server JS, we were able to take our HANA connectivity and use it. This is this XS HDB, uh, HDB CONN. That is an instance of this HDB EXT module. We were able to use it as middleware inside of Express. So also, a nice feature of this wrapper module is the fact that it integrates into Express, and then Express will actually establish our connection to the database for us. And we don't even have to worry about doing all of this coding. So let's take this same block of code that we have here that was written with the low-level client, and instead, let's rewrite it to use the abstracted client. I'll get the source code and we will put it in here. Now we just created a um, another route. So if somebody does forward slash express, then it will go to this route handler. And you notice already it's a lot less lines of code. We don't need to load the HANA options. We don't need to create a connection string. All that will be handled automatically for us. And in fact, all we have to do is we come here to the request object and Express has added our database connection to the request object. It's already established the connection to the database using the HDB EXT module. 
and uh, it even does connection pooling. It's, it, it's grabbed a, a connection out of the pool. It will return the connection to the pool when we send the response. We don't have to worry about disconnecting or managing the pool ourselves or, or creating a connection. It's really much simpler. We can focus on just executing the SQL statements. Now, as far as the execution of the SQL, it's, that is largely the same um, because once we have a connection, we'll create a prepared statement. And this is going to be asynchronous, so we'll need an embedded callback on the, uh, on the preparation. Um, if the preparation was successful, then we can go ahead and execute it. Once again, that will be asynchronous, so we need an embedded callback here uh, to process the results. When we get the results back, we'll put them in the response object. So the, the handling, the, the logic here is basically the same. It's, it's still using the embedded callbacks, but we get rid of a lot of this extra boilerplate code and just let Express do the work for us. All right, let's at this point, let's go ahead and save and let's run our service module so that we can test these two route handlers that we just created. All right, that's done running. Let's launch our application via the web module, log in, and we'll change the URL. First, let's go to forward slash node forward slash ex2. That'll put us in our main route handler, and that's going to execute this first block uh, that used the low-level client. And you see we're just doing a query of select session user, current user, and then returning it to the web browser. So we see our session user and current schema. I'm sorry, I, I think I said current user, but it's session user and current schema. That's what we're uh, that's what we're selecting here. So we see we are getting connected to our container, and we are running uh, the query in the database as our container technical user. Now, if I would add onto this and add uh, Express onto the end of the URL, then we go into our other route handler the one that is using the abstracted library. And the results are basically the same. We're getting the same session user, the same current schema, but we're just going through that different path in the code. So at runtime, you're not really going to see any difference um, uh, between the two approaches, but obviously the, the coding is quite a bit different. 